Here we are in the intermission, in the middle of the campaign Invasion from the Unknown, between parts one and two. I'm going to continue playing. What lay in front of us was unlike anything I had ever imagined. It was not simply a small valley guarding its green light from the scorching suns, but rather an endless expanse of vegetated lands. It was like being home again. No, the scenery was more akin to a dreamland conjured from the memories of a long-gone age. The Lady of Light had not seen such a landscape for hundreds, thousands, perhaps millions of years, and she rejoiced at the view while the fresh northern winds blew in her face. The dwarves, on the other hand, were too used to their underground abodes to feel at ease on the surface. I understood them and regretted that we could not have their company for our next journey. The prospect of marching into the Northern Humans' territory uninvited was not very encouraging. Scenario 14, By and Behold, the Grand Council. I knew that from that point onwards, I would have to make decisions for our people on my own, as Anlinde was no longer there to provide me with her seldom unwise counsel and guidance and I knew there was a possibility that I might come to regret some of those decisions. But someone had to take the reins of our fractured civilization and move us forward. And that someone, at least for the moment, had to be me. Our forefathers could never have imagined their legacy would meet such a shameful end. Shameful, I say. I cannot wait to see the faces of our kin in Balgran. Surely they will be amused to see the King of Earthgar become the heir of a band of homeless beggars. <laughs> My King, you didn't seem too bothered about the situation back in... And what did you expect me to do, Arthurine? Act pessimistic in front of our people, right before leading them out of the caves into a suicide mission, because that was no option. I apologise for venting like this, Gallas, lady. I just couldn't hold my frustration any longer. <sighs> Though, mayhap there is a silver lining to all this. What do you think, Galas? It is our hope that the Northerners will acknowledge the threat and help us retaliate, Majesty. It would be highly unreasonable on their part to turn a blind eye to the destruction that the Chaos Empire has and will continue to wreak. Only a complete fool wouldn't have take you and your people seriously, Gallus. Would that we had the men and resources to aid you in this crusade. Still, Alfirin would like to hand you a gift as token of our gratitude. Use it wisely. Oh, it's a barrel. I wouldn't have be surprised if our children a few generations from now spoke legends about the exploits of the of the elves of the Valley of Alinea against the Dark Empire in the south. Farewell. May the bright gods let our paths cross again. Farewell, friends. Farewell, Alinea. I wish we had more time to exchange notes about our culture's respective brands of magic. Bye, Althurin. May we meet a second time. And thus the dwarves of Hearthgar and the elves of the valley parted ways. So, now we need to find the rest of the elves. Any ideas? We should be able to find the northern country's capital if we follow the dwarves' instructions. It's supposed to be only about three days from here if we avoid stopping to rest during daytime. I'm just unsure about walking through human lands with a lich among us. I am ready to banish him from this world if you wish, my lord. You don't need to call me lord. It doesn't sit well with me, considering how much older you... Uh, I mean no offence, my lady, but... Huh. I did notice it makes you uncomfortable, young Gallas. I have been but a homeless wanderer for so long. I think it only proper for me to defer to the last regent lord of my kin. But if you wish me to stop, then I will. On the condition that you call me a linear, like I said before. I will try. 
<laughs> what is this? You both have fancy titles to flaunt around, and instead of for this strike fraternization thing, this is a waste of everyone's time. As if you ever cared about anyone's titles or ranks, Malkashar. Someone is observing us. Outsiders, what brings you to Aragway territory? You don't need to point your bow at us, sir. We come in peace, as refugees. Is that a lich behind you? This is unexpected, but nothing we could not handle. Someone ought to teach you to pick your fights more cautiously, well? No. Please, listen to us. We are elves. You may have heard of a large number of us coming to this country, seeking refuge from a war in the southern lands. Elves? Refugees, you say? Ha! Ah, elves indeed. Those pointy eared creatures don't exist but in tall tales of a past age. Gallas, allow me to do the talking. I could seduce him into cooperating with us. Gallas, boy, I'm ready to strike down this nuisance if you wish. Quiet, you two. Erathan, they must be the creatures we were searching for. Maybe we should take them to the Grand Council before those fiends return. Elves, with a subservient lich and a fairy of the forest walking among them. This is quite the odd picture. It's almost entertaining. You, fairy, what do you have to say in defense of you and your friends? Perhaps we can make a deal. These seem to be difficult times for your country. I can tell from your worn attire that you were involved in some sort of skirmish recently. Was it against human invaders from the south? Our people are well acquainted with their tactics and weapons, as they lost their home to none other than those barbarians and their demon allies. Perhaps there is some task we could assist you with in exchange for guaranteeing a safe passage through the northern marshlands. Ha! Ah, you read me well, fairy. To tell you the truth, we were sent by the Grand Council of the Northern Peoples to Ergar to escort your leader back to the Council for an audience, but it seems you came to us instead. I take it something bad happened back there. Lord Galas, right? Yes, sir. The Kingdom of Hrthgar has fallen to the Chaos Empire. Ha! Huh. So that's how dire the situation is? Very well then, Elf Lord. We can escort you to our capital, Ralfin. But we cannot guarantee your safety right now. You see, a group of orcish mercenaries allied with those chaos fiends set up camp north of the river. Just as we managed to cross, their Saurian allies arrived and seized control of the bridge. There is a mountain pass we can use, but none of you seem adequately equipped for an expedition like that. So, my proposal is as follows. You repel the invaders, and we'll take it to Railfin. Seems like a sound plan to me. I thought so. We'll be watching you from close range. They do not seem to trust us much, do they? Would you trust people who consort with necromancers, Galas? We should be thankful they didn't decide to kill us on sight. Hey, don't be so sure of yourself, girl. They seem to take offense at your presence as well. It sounds like forest fairies have become a more common sight in the northern forests for some reason. I understand that these humans might not trust them, but we might be able to enlist their help somehow. It's interesting that he did not pay any attention to our goblin friend. Oh, I feared for my life for a moment there. Phew. Well now, this mission will be pleasant to accomplish, for me at least. What are those creatures he mentioned? The Saurians. Treacherous, scaled pests that frolic in swampy waters and impale you with their rusty spears from beneath the surface. They rarely pose a threat on their own until they swarm you in numbers. Well, let's be about it then. Elinia's affinity with the fairy realm allows you to control forest sprites. They have both a melee and a ranged attack, which inflict fire damage to foes. 
The drawback, however, is that they are very fragile creatures and can be easily slain by enemies in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Furthermore, they are costlier to recruit than most other units. Never send them against your adversaries without protection. And this is the beginning. The scenario objective is defeat all enemy leaders. We have Saurians in the game. We supposedly have Chaos in the game as well. We've got an early finish bonus. We get 40% of gold carried over to the next scenario. This all seems good. Let's, that was the objectives. We just checked them. I want to look at the status table. Okay, yeah, there's two other players in, in, the, in the map. Blue, who I assume are going to be Chaos, and Purple, who I assume are going to be Saurians. So it could be the other way around. And there is this gift that I will now pick up. The arrow is in this barrel are some of the most expensive weaponry ever devised by the dwarves of Hearthgar, although much of the credit for the design goes to their fallen kin in Gnalvarden. Each arrow shaft has tiny runes engraved on them that react upon entering a living target and ignite the explosive tip. The explosion, it causes an amount of damage not just to the arrow's target, but also to anything directly behind it. Surely this will come in handy later on, but we should make sure to hand these only to a very skilled archer so as to avoid wasting them. Besides, it would not do for a novice to accidentally blow up one of our own. These arrows are more befitting for a skilled archer, which I certainly am not. Okay, I can't quite get back to my starting circle, which is <laughs> which is pretty unfortunate. Um, Alright, so I can't give it to any of these nice folks over here. Um, in that case, I guess I'm going to go and do some scouting. Can't see anything too exciting yet. Alinea can move faster through the forest, so I'm going to send her over this way. And there are a couple of houses. Alright, I need a skilled archer. Now, all but five of my undead troops are dead. The five who made it are living legends, or rather, unliving legends. So I'm going to give them all names. Scythe. You are Slashy. You're so slow. You already have a name, Milongil. And I just recalled you by accident. Oh well. I'll give you a name and I'm gonna keep you. So we've got Scythe, we've got Slashy, we have Lady. I'm not very imaginative with spectre names. I mean, they're not the most characterful of units, are they? Okay, as far as archers are concerned, you could take it. Um, there are some people here who I haven't actually recalled for a long time. Revelia the Sharpshooter seems like the most obvious option. That is intelligent and resilient. And uh, explosive arrows on top of the marksman ability could be very handy indeed. So let's do it. What else am I going to have in this scenario? Well, I don't really know what enemies are going to come. I should recruit a couple more of these brand new units, the sprites. Not too many of them, just some. I think three will be enough. I will want another healer. I've got two Shides who I could recall. Or I could try and get Limirea the Druid up a bit. Now I don't want. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm going to have to be very careful with my units flying around like crazy because Saurians are mostly skirmishers. So I am in fact going to recall Limirea and have her take that particular role. Up here, Malkashar can get this house. Igor can scout a bit more. Okay, we can see as a rabbit. Interesting. Okay, I'm not threatened by that. Nothing up there. 
grab the house. Galinia, you grab one of these. What's the rabbit going to do? I hope it's not going to attack me. Otherwise it's uh, rabbit stew, I guess. Ooh, nice forest creatures. Now, Revelia the sharpshooter. Grab the arrows. Okay, it's a one-shot item, and we'll deal 80% damage to the unit directly behind it. That could come in handy in interesting situations. Unfortunately, it doesn't stack with my marksman ability or with my existing ranged attacks, but uh, yeah, pretty handy. Careful. It would hurt me to lose one of our men by accidentally triggering an explosive artifact like that. I will make sure to handle them with care, sir. Okay, with explosive arrows on the way, and with this scenario begun, I am going to take a break. Thank you very much for your attention, and I will see you again soon.